We download the arts in the video for free, link in the description. For a chromatic aberration shader, we will first add a color rec node to the scene. This is what we will use to overlay the chromatic aberration effect. Then under material, select empty, then select shader material, select the shader, select empty again, and create a new shader. I will name it chromatic aberration, then press create, then select the shader to open up the shader code window. Inside the code, we will first define the shader type as a canvas item. Canvas item basically means that this shader will render in 2D. Additionally, inside of the shader code, you must put a semicolon at the end of every line. We will then create three variables. We use uniform to make the variable export variable. This will allow us to edit the variable from the right. Although for screen texture, we use uniform for its other function, and that is to have its value set by the go.rendering system, as this variable is meant to grab the texture of the screen. Then we put sampler 2D or float to declare this as a variable. In shader code, you write the type of the variable instead of just writing var or var. Then you can apply an additional hint for what the variable can and cannot equal. In screen texture states that the variable represents the screen texture, which having this ensures go provides the current screen's rendered image. Then filter linear is the texture filter of the screen image. You can change this to any of the texture filters you see inside of Godot, including filter nearest, and we don't use the mipmap versions of this filter, as we will be using the full resolution texture of the screen and not a scaled down version created by the mipmap. And for aberration x and aberration y, we simply define a range of what it can equal, with negative 1 being the minimum, and positive 1.0 being the maximum. Then we make this equal 0.04 to have the default value be 0.04. And for functions inside of shaders, we treat them in the same way as the difference between the Godot variables and shader uniforms, where we define what the function will equal to declare it. So for the built-in fragment function, we declare it as void, as as nothing will equal this function as this function won't return any value. Additionally, we must use curly brackets at the start and end of the function, and the line with the curly bracket is the exception of where you don't need a semicolon at the end of the line. Fragment function is a function that runs its code on each individual pixel to compute the final color of the object with the shader applied. Inside, we will first define the size of a single screen pixel, so the effect provides the same amount of chromatic aberration no matter the resolution of your game or screen texture. Vec2 is a vector2 that contains an x and y value, which can be used to store the size of the pixel. First, we use texture size passing the screen texture in Zero. zero is the LOD that we are using or level of detail, and zero means that we are using the full resolution of the screen texture. Texture size will provide the resolution of the screen texture. This overall means that texture size will provide the resolution of the screen texture in pixels. Then we convert the integer size into a float vector 2, and we do 1.0 divided by the resolution of the screen to provide the size of a pixel in UV coordinates, which UV coordinates are normalized, meaning that the image in UV goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1, with 0, 0 representing the top left of the image and 1, 1 representing the bottom right of the image. We define another vector 2. This is for the final offset of the chromatic aberration, taking into account the aberration x and aberration y values in proportion to the pixel size of the respective axis. Then we multiply this result by 100 as otherwise you would have to write 0.0004 instead of 0.04 when setting the value of aberration x and aberration y. Then from the final version of the screen texture with the chromatic aberration applied, we create a vec3. Vec3 is a vector 3 that contains an x, y, and z value, which we can use to store the RGUMB values by making the red equal x, green equal y, and blue equal z. Then for each color value of the texture. We use texture to provide the respective color of a texture after some edits to the color's position. Green texture provides the texture of the screen, which is the image that we will use as a base. Then screen UV is the position of the pixel that we are up to inside the fragment function. And for the red and blue values, we apply the offset to screen UV to offset the position of this color of the pixel, providing the chromatic aberration effect. Additionally, you can change the plus and minus values. You can also decide if you want to instead offset the green as well. Finally, we grab color, which is the built-in output variable of the canvas item shader. And setting color changes the value of the color of the current pixel that we are up to inside the fragment function, which again the fragment function runs this code on each individual pixel. We must specifically grab the RGB value as we don't need the fourth value, which is A or transparency. As transparency isn't needed for this chromatic aberration effect, then we send it to this final color variable. Now you have a simple chromatic aberration shader with a controllable amount of chromatic aberration for the X and Y separately that you can add to any of your 2D Godot games. And don't forget to check out the project files in the link in the description.